Okay, so um, the coolest name, Sherry Skipper Spurgeon, um, came in with a one of the coolest like icons I've ever seen in a while, like a dog with a like a blow dry in the middle of the street. <laughs> um, came in, so I just wanted to put back in the chat, maybe for for Sherry, um, and for just for posterity's sake, this website for OC Rise. Rosie Rise is a competitive poetry slam that we'll be putting in, putting on in two weeks on, on March 27th. Um, high school students can go there and register um, and they can participate for a chance to win a workshop with Phil Kay, who is a, um, a pretty phenomenal um, a master poet. Um, that is a free event. Um, in, uh, most years it's a team event based on high school poets in the area. This year it is an individual event and is also free. So please share that link with any um, interested writer you might know who's in high school. And um, it's just a big party Saturday afternoon on March 27th. So um, to participate though, you do need to sign up in advance. So you have to go to that website to find out more about that. Okay, so um, let's just dive into it for a minute. We, I think we have um, Leo, Mia and Elora who are set to read Sherry Skipper Spurgeon. Are you here as an audience member or as a, as a reader? You could chat us or you could speak. It's totally up to you. I'm just an observer. Okay, okay, fantastic. <laughs> um, so um, if you haven't done this before, I think the participants have, um, the, you, there's two ways to show your appreciation. Um, one is you can unmute yourself at the end and you can applaud and cheer. Um, and that's always good. Um, it can get a little weird because Zoom like only lets one audio feed go at a time. Um, and or you can put your comments in the chat. You can say like, yes, or snaps, or like snaptastic, or, you know, snap paper, scissors, I don't know, whatever. Whatever you want to put in the comment chat is like a good way to say you did a good job as a reader. Um, so are there any other rules for this? I think my the th our three main readers know all the rules that go along with the public open mic. So I'm going to skip most of those um, and get right to it. So between the three of you, I just want to double check that is that you are the performers, right? Alora, Leo, Mia, are there, is there anybody else who wants to have at it? Okay. Um, you guys have a preference of order? Or should we play a quick game? Okay. Um, I'm thinking of a number between one and a hundred. Leah, what's the number? Seven. Seven. Laura, what's the number? 24. All right, uh, Mia, what's the number? 37. 37. Okay, our order is Alora, Leo, Mia. Okay, ready? All right, I'm going to spotlight Alora. I'm going to mute myself and everybody else stay muted, please, um, for the reading. So this is a poem called Two American Slackers. You're in first grade. Table three's been throwing erasers at each other, so the whole class has to stay in at recess. No one ever said group punishment was fair, but it's life. And maybe after 20 minutes of being glared at by table one, table two, table four, table five, and table six, table three will take a hint. You're in second grade. It's almost Thanksgiving, so you're coloring a turkey. The teacher pairs you with Ben. You suggest coloring the turkey brown and red and yellow and orange because that's realistic and coloring neatly inside the lines because those are the rules. But Ben colors the turkey green with blue scales go outside the lines and beady red eyes that make you want to cry. You don't understand why Ben would do that until you remember that Ben sat at table three and table three didn't mind staying in at recess. You go through third grade, fourth grade, fifth 
grade, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, you go through life thinking that if you don't throw erasers and color inside the lines and stay on the nice list and do all your homework and mind your own business and follow the law, you'll be okay. Then you get assigned one whopper of a group project and you're failing big time. Because until table three can put their erasers away and stop seeing people and throwing parties and traveling, until table three can put their masks on and start doing their part, until everyone cares, nobody gets to go out for recess. No one ever said group punishment was fair, but it's life. And maybe after a year of being glared at by the sick and the dying and the grieving and the doctors and the nurses and the essential workers and the people who want this pandemic to finally end, America's slackers will take a hint. Thank you. Wow. All right, so unmute and applause or digital applause or snaps. Um, yeah, put it in the chat. There you go. Um, Sherry Skipper Spurgeon and Jasmine got it, got it already. All right. Um, cool, Laura, thank you. Thank you. It's always wonderful to hear what you have written. Um, Laura will be one of the featured performers at um, the, our showcase event as well. Um, this is going to be a uh, like a pre-recorded show, but it's also going to be at the new drive-in theater at the, that the Frida is helping put on um, at the Tustin Market. No, do I have that right? The, the district, the, the, the district in Tustin um, at the top level, parking level. So um, I've seen it, it's hilarious. I'm not gonna let anybody else see it until the evening. So everybody has to come pay to see it because it's really funny. So thanks, Laura. All right, Leo, are you ready to come up? Sure. All right, let's okay. give everybody, everybody give a warm round for Leo. And come on up, buddy. This poem is called The Autumn Woods. The trees were colored red. The leaves all looked dead. They fell to the ground and made a crunching sound. We were out for a reason before the winter season to collect all our food during this winter prelude. The squirrels gathered nuts and called the turkey a klutz for dropping some berries as the small baby bear was eating some cherries. The forest was peaceful, life was now blissful, until a loud sound cracked through the air. Bang! Smoke wafted out a long wooden stick, and the animals heard a metallic click. A big mother deer fell on some grass. As she fell on the ground, it made a soft thudding sound. The animals froze, all filled with dread, as one of their own was declared dead. The hunters bound her in ropes and went back in high hopes to prepare for a feast. They were hunting a beast to serve on a platter and make them all fatter. The very next day, the hunters returned. Their target this time was that loud, fat, round bird. Okay, <laughs> Leo. Oh my god! Oh wow, that was like that took a dark turn. Um, thank you, Leo. Thanks, man, for coming up. Um, make sure you read your chat, okay? Uh, for 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 your for the, for your greatness. Okay. Um, I think. It is Mia Sumasakis' turn. Yes? Hi. <laughs> All right. Oh, Mia has a, a fan out there. I do. Everybody? Yeah. Did my mother. <laughs> no, tell somebody else to try to sneak in the, the video. Okay, everybody give it up for, for Mia um, as we get ready to listen. Okay. So this is called The Top. The first hotel to be built solely of leaves has made an appearance in my backyard. I didn't ask them to do it, but the caterpillars seem to be starting a less hungry generation, vomiting green to cement fronds together. They've made an elevator of vines and string bean balconies and don't hesitate to invite me inside. I take off my shoes, but they laugh and tell me bounce house etiquette is not required. I assume, or more, 
I assume a more postured manner and I am led to a room covered in lily pad blankets with wine in the fridge to be opened only with payment. The curtains are browned and the curtains are brown and dead and crumble when I scrunch them, which isn't also bad because now I have a constant view of my house down below. That night, a cherry chandelier mocks me from above and a bashful moment occurs when I think I see God naked. Her skin is more slimy than I had imagined and she looks a lot at her toes when I squeeze her palm. Reassurance is not something God should need, but she seems to be numb to her own name. The caterpillars greet me when sunlight fries through the green of the ceiling and they tell me they are sincerely apologetic that I cannot go out to my green, that I cannot go out to my string bean balcony for someone has eaten the 15 beans in each pod and left nothing but green lips. Instead, I am offered a bottle of wine for free, which I accept gladly because I'm already, I am already a little homesick and the plum jam tang reminds me of my kitchen towels with fruit designs. Caterpillars quite obsessively tend to my needs, bringing a, a hot tub of sugar water and blankets sewn from olive stems. When I attempt a conversation, they become grave and say I really shouldn't be bothering them in the midst of their string bean thief investigations. I try to tell them not to be so quick to criminalize. Perhaps the beans fell out. It has been quite windy lately. They pat me on the head and say that living safely in my house has surgically taken out the survivalist in me. That night, a cherry chandelier mo mocks me from above and God licks her fingers, feet dangling out a window without a balcony. I ask her what she just ate and she doesn't answer the question directly, but tells me that she hadn't thought beans were a divine substance before that meal. Yet she doesn't seem like the kind of person to make a literal joke like that. So I ask her what's up and she says she feels a little guilty for taking away my balcony. I put my arm around her shoulders and wonder if maybe she isn't over the Tower of Babel. The caterpillars greet me when sunlight fries through the green of the ceiling and they tell me they are sincerely apologetic but they found convincing evidence that I am the one who stole and ate the beans. They say I am what I eat and what I am is green and pale along the forehead with weeds for hair and cracked glow stick veins beneath my arms. I know this is ridiculous, but when I look in the mirror, I see what they see and wish to go back home and summon a surgeon to bring back the red parts in me. The caterpillars are shaking their heads and I think perhaps they're thinking that I could be ground up and used as cement. They must have read what I thought of their thoughts for they close in on me with locked antenna and thorn bayonet. I tell them God did it, God ate your balcony, but this is not something they want to believe. So I have no choice but to grab a few bottles of wine and run and slide down corn stalks instead of taking the elevator. The caterpillars throw thorns at my back, but I duck in all the right ways and they are too clunky to keep up with me. At, at home, I curl up on my fruit design towels and read the side effects on the wine on the wine bottle and smile because I no longer need to summon a surgeon. I am just allergic to plum jam wine. Thank you. Wow. Yes, wow. <clears throat> wow, it was an appropriate response. That was beautiful, Mia. That was really beautiful. Thank the you. language was just like... Also, it is a, um, it's a pretty appropriate response, I think. Um, in any circumstance to just grab some bottles of wine and run. <laughs> so, so props to that. Um, make sure you check out your, your um, comments there uh, in the chat. Um, hello, hello friend. Um, uh, well, that was kind of fast. Um, so I, I, um, I, I think, I think we're done. <laughs> we have, does anybody else want to come up and speak? Okay. Um, uh, uh so Antonio, Josue, uh, John, thank you for this. Um, I don't want to keep you guys past your time either. Um, uh, second round, Jasmine says. Second round. Jasmine wants to hear some more. Are you guys up for a second round? Mia is not. That's fine. Bye, Mia. Okay. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna all bow out. Um, but thank you, Jasmine, for being such a cool supporter of it. Um, you should hit, hit another session up.
um, one that's going on strong. And and do if you have um, if you have people who you think would be into it, um, spread the word about OC Rise. And then the performance is on March twenty seventh um, at one p.m. Like I mentioned, there's about um, twenty students signed up so far. We have six judges from uh, the the MFA program at Chapman University. Um, we it should be a really good fun afternoon um, with a lot of amazing poetry um so so check this one out too jasmine it's also for attendance for that one is free as well um but information about attending is uh, at the osha website or at that website i just shared over so um so thanks again for for boca um for you guys for for hosting this and for for letting us crash for a little bit um we were talking earlier about like getting some some like walking by audience and maybe next year we'll be back downtown. Yeah, and we'll, um, yeah, everyone will be a little healthier, a little safer, a little, we'll have listened to Alora's story a little bit more and, um, and we, can, we can do it upright. Yeah. Okay, take your poetry out into the world, um, everybody uh, and everybody have a wonderful evening.